When I was in sixth grade, I remember waking up in Christmas morning, finding out that my grandfather with type 2 diabetes has passed away from a hypoglycemia shock. I'm still embarrassed by this day because that was the first time I heard the word type 2 diabetes, and I didn't fully understand what that meant. A year after, my father was diagnosed with the same condition, and he really struggled adjusting a new lifestyle of what he so-called a pill-dependent life. One day, my dad bought a running machine and started walking 15 miles a day to avoid taking 15 pills a day. This wasn't easy. He felt frustrated, helpless, and isolated when all the walking that he has done wouldn't give him the blood glucose uh, level number of 90, his, his ideal number. Um, sometimes he felt ashamed of himself for having that condition um, in his age among his peers. As a family, though, uh, my sister, my mom, and I decided to change our whole lifestyle, too, to support my dad. So we ate vegetables as snacks. We cut all sugary snacks. But most of the times, we, what we really did was we cheer for my dad every single day, regardless what the outcomes were for that day. Two months after, my dad lost about 40 pounds. Even 14 years later today, he still practices the same routine. But most importantly, my dad found his confidence that he can take care of his own health, surrounded by the supportive people that he loves. Over the time, I have learned so much about type 2 diabetes from my dad, and this experience really inspired me to help people, especially kids, to have the health literacy early on, to not only help themselves, but with, for, for other people who are affected by this kind of uh, chronic conditions. When I looked deeply into the problem, I was very shocked. Not only 18% of kids have a chronic condition, more than half of the adults in the United States have one or more different kinds of chronic conditions. And you can imagine how many kids are surrounded by their parents and their loved ones who are struggling with this kind of health issues. In the case of type 1 diabetes, also called the juvenile diabetes, this kid's life are changed overnight. Kids as young as 18 months old are diagnosed with the condition. Kids prick their fingers eight times a day. They have a difficult time articulating how they're feeling because they're so young, they don't have the vocabulary yet. They feel alone because a lot of times they're the only one at school who have type 1 diabetes, and they have no one to talk about what they are going through. Parents also struggle. Currently, all the education are directed towards the, towards the parents, and the type 1 diabetes education is introduced during the week when the child is first diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at an ER. And most of the parents, they never heard about type 1 diabetes or they don't know how complex it is to manage type 1 diabetes. As you can see, type 1 diabetes is introduced at the most fearful moment in their lives. And this made me think, how can you bring, how can you make this less stressful for these families to go through this process? So what we did was we went into the homes to really observe how families cope with these emotions day to day. And we have found something really, really interesting. You know, I can imagine all of us had teddy bears or plush animals growing up. Um, I had one too, mine was a, a piggy plush, and then I'm 26 years old, I still have it in my bedroom, I'm not too embarrassed by it. Um, but these kids have their plush animals and they're playing with their, their friends, and we have seen something really interesting. What we have seen was that kids were giving injections to their teddy bear. Kids were stapling a drawing of a pump and stapling onto their fur. Kids were portraying what they're going through to this teddy bear to have a companion who are just like them. And this was eye-opening for me. It made me think, if kids are already practicing a play of care, how can you make this more real? How can you leverage this to empower kids to have the health literacy and really help them build a confidence that they can take care of themselves? And that is how this little Jerry the Bear was born. Jerry is just like them. He has type 1 diabetes. You can squeeze his fingers to check his blood glucose level, give him insulin, feed him different foods. Jerry has a storyline of training for the Olympics game. We call it a all-stars game, where he travels all over the world 
meet new friends like Momo the monkey, George the vegetarian shark. <laughs> Thank you. Play different sports, and he learned a new diabetes lesson. And before we even get to this point, it started with this prototype. As you can imagine, this did not really convey what we wanted to convey. Um, kids kind of questioned whether it's a bear or not, or sometimes um, they found it creepy because of his uh, Furby eye that we hacked into the bear. But when we tested, some people might say this is a failed prototype, but it was not a failure for us. It still proved the concept, but the concept that having a comforting companion who has type 1 diabetes is really exciting for kids. So we built more and more and more. 29 different iterations of prototypes tested with about 350 kids before we even shipped. This Jerry has been out in the wild for the past two years. And during the process, we have reached 4% of kids newly diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and placed Jerry into 25% of all pediatric endocrinologist office rooms. The stories that we hear from families are amazing. Not only kids still play with Jerry for an hour a week, even six months after having him, our longest customer have had Jerry for 18 months and they still play with Jerry. We have seen siblings want to learn about type 1 diabetes because playing with Jerry is so much fun. We have also seen kids feeling more confident to talk about type 1 diabetes to their community and also wanting to have a conversation around emotions with their families. In one case, one of our child, um, who is Jerry's best friend, have mentioned that type 1 diabetes is my superpower, it's the best thing I've ever had. Our families love Jerry the Bear, and we love our families too because they have helped us to identify the four key values that really helped us desi to design the best play methodologies uh, to make health really fun. The so first value that we have identified is celebrate effort, not outcomes. Jerry is not perfect. And what I mean by that is we don't celebrate only good blood glucose level. Sometimes you do the right things, and Jerry's blood sugar level might, not be in, it might be low or very high. And what we do is we celebrate kids, um, their persistency and effort to make sure Jerry is feeling good. And what we have seen was that because Jerry's, you know, there's room for Jerry, the kids can come in to make it perfect, they build a very special bond, and that is how they build friendship. Second, story storytelling is key. There was a time in the prototype where Jerry's play was solely on care. There's no storyline, just you practice giving him shots, checking his blood glucose level, feeding him foods, that's it. When we tested with the children, the effect of that was really short term. Without the storyline, Jerry has no personality, and that didn't spark the curiosity among the kids to learn more about him. So that's the reason why we came up with that Olympic story game. And what we have seen was that learning diabetes lessons through the story allows kids to apply the lessons in context because they can, when they're in a similar situation that they have seen with Jerry going through. Third, make it simple. Currently, when educators teach about type 1 diabetes, it's a very complex way of explaining it. What I mean by that is they use the analogy of pancreas, broken lock, broken keys, and I, it took me multiple times to read the analogy to understand. So when we were designing these analogies, we thought to ourselves, well, how can you make this medically accurate, but make it simple and fun so that a four-year-old can understand and they can explain this to their parents? So the analogy that we came up with in explaining diabetes is that your pancreas is having an awesome party. Sugar friends and insulin friends need to dance together as a pair to create the energy that you need. When you have type 1 diabetes, not all friends are there yet, so you have to call them up. So when you need more sugar friends to come, you need to eat foods with carbs. When you need to call more insulin friends to come, you take insulin. And what we have seen was that this analogy was so simple, but also allowed parents and kids that learning about type 1 diabetes is not complicated, is not challenging, is so approachable. What we have done with this analogy is that we lowered the barrier to learn about type 1 diabetes education and we have seen that kids wanted to learn more and more because it was easy to learn. And lastly, open-ended play is very important. We didn't invent something really new with Jerry, 
we kept the core meaning of a teddy bear, the symbol of comfort and safety, it really applies something new to really help them learn about healthcare. Um, but what we have seen was that you know, when we ship out the bear, we don't prescribe how to play with Jerry. We actually let families let us know, you know, how should, we, how, should we, how should we be playing with Jerry? So we've seen that from stories, Jerry has gone to so many different places, from schools to camps to hospitals. Jerry has so many nicknames, so many genders. Um, he has worn so many different costumes. In homes, we have seen kids call Jerry a brother or a sister. We have seen families giving a placemat for Jerry in the dinner table. Open-ended play really allows kids and families to put their meaning into how they want this friendship to develop. And that was really important for Jerry to be a companion, not just a toy. So what's next for Jerry? Well, coming back to our core insight of how we started Jerry the Bear, we have seen that kids with food allergies practice giving EpiPen shots to their teddy bears, we have seen kids without the chronic conditions also playing doctor to act the, the caregiving aspect in the play. So we just started our next journey by creating this new Jerry and really bring our play methodologies around social emotional development, exercise, and nutrition to help all kids to be healthy and well. In the big picture, play is not really only for kids, it's also for teenagers, adults, and the elderly, it's really for everyone. And I hope Jerry is just one example of leveraging play in health, and I really hope Jerry can inspire and feel the vision of making health a less of a scary experience, but an empowering experience for all people to get excited to get on board. Thank you.